Hey there, my name's Heidi and I'm the Crafty Socialite. Today I want to have a really close look at the Falcon 2 Pro 60 watt laser, which is from Creality. I purchased a 22 watt Falcon last year. It's been very well loved. And I've received this one early from the company because I'm doing some special projects. They have not asked me to do um, a review or anything and I'm not one of their affiliates, so I'm not getting anything for this video other than I just want to show you what is included in the package and also show you some cuts and let's get into, you know, showing what the actual laser can do. I know I put off um, buying a laser for years, so I really do want to do some videos around what you can do with your laser. So if you want to like and subscribe, I'll do side-by-side -side comparisons of the different models, as well as showing you how to put a rotary on the Falcon Pro if you're interested. Now, the fully enclosed laser is in this red sort of plastic um, material. If I push on it there, you can see there is some movement in it from the exterior it is a heavy unit it weighs around 19 and a half kilos so it's quite a substantial and strong unit the advantage to having an enclosed unit is you will receive a pair of green safety glasses but you don't need to wear these when you're operating the laser as normal this is a couple of advantages i think because i have young kids and they knock on the door and say hey mum, can i come in and i have to say no not yet i'm working with my laser so if you've got people walking around you, whether they're workmates or family, keep that in mind that they don't need to wear safety glasses or you're not at risk of laser scatter when it is in the fully enclosed position. The other advantage to that is you don't have to wear green glasses when you're working on your laptop whilst a, a cut or an engrave is happening and I think that's good. I've even done a school pickup wearing these on my head so you know real fashion statement but you don't have to wear these when you're operating it in the normal um, fashion. The laser comes with an air assist which is ideal for using when you're doing cuts it just keeps the cut nice and clean you get very little sort of burn markings so there's a lot less work in terms of sanding and finishing if you do have an air assist so that is included there is a three inch exhaust which I throw out the window when I'm using this and there is a USB powered fan in the side which is actually rigged into the actual unit so when you turn on the laser it will turn on um, so it's separate on the other laser I have to plug it into the USB port myself but with this one it's it's sort of like all included and there's not that extra step now I find this adequate for my needs I'm in a fairly well ventilated space and I know that some people are using lasers in their apartments or you know very close to neighbors I don't find the smell or the smoke um, problematic I do with the other laser I had a terrible chest infection last year and I found it very difficult even with the soft enclosure on it but with this there is a lot less smoke and smell however you may want to if you're in a really confined space or you're not in a well ventilated space you might want to think about chucking an inline fan or even getting a smoke purifier I know um, Creality are coming out with their own smoke purifier but you know there are aftermarket ones available as well it is uh on the side here an on off button for the light panel across the front i've just got that turned off at the moment because i think it makes it difficult to see the laser head includes the 22 watt the 40 watt and the 60 watt power now the laser module is much bigger and more substantial than on my 22 watt laser and so is the power pack it's a bigger heavier duty more powerful power pack uh, to power that laser. I've now zoomed in closer to the laser itself so that you can see it up close and personal. I'll turn it on, you can see that the light bar up here turns on so you can see in the laser when the enclosure is closed. When you first turn it on, the laser head will home into that left hand corner. You can change that in the settings in Lightburn. As you can see, there's the three green lights across the front. So you've got air and then fire and then lens after the initial boot up you'll hear that air turn off and this first light will start flashing red there you go so that will then turn green when you are doing a cut layer and you have the air activated in that cut layer in light burn so that is perfectly normal to flash red the ones you have to worry about is fire and also lens it will let you know if the lens is dirty and needs cleaning and if there is a sense of too much smoke or a flame the fire one will turn red and start flashing and it will also have an audible beep so that you can hear that coming and that is obviously where your stop button comes into play. 
keep in mind there's a big yellow uh, warding sticker you probably can't see there which says please keep the honeycomb um, like debris tray clean so any debris will drop into that bottom tray so you do have to sort of keep that clean the panels are similar to my other laser in that you've got your movement panel here I actually don't use this I use light burn so I've got my own little move panel in there and I you know move the laser back and forth using that but it is there so you can frame up and start and stop your job now I think that sort of works into connectivity I connect my laser by USB to my MacBook Pro I'm using Lightburn G-Code version on that I like the fact that it's not proprietary software so you're using software that you're going to be able to use with other machines and you know you, you're learning one software and you're sort of done there are free software so you don't have to purchase Lightburn you can use um, I think it's GRBL I think that's a Windows based one so I can't speak to it because I haven't used it but you don't have to pay for software and you don't have to hook up to a computer you can actually put the TF card in the side with your g-code file on it and sort of hit start from there so there is the advantage that you don't need to have connectivity either to a computer and you don't need to also have internet uh, running I know a lot of people using them in sheds and garages so you don't have to have internet or anything like that so that is how it basically connects on the front here you have two keys there that basically lock and unlock the laser you cannot use the laser if you lose the key so you get two keys I suggest putting one in a safe drawer somewhere so that you always know where the spare is and you have the emergency stop so I do like the safety features of both of the lasers and this is why I put off buying a laser for years was I was scared of the laser beams I was worried about my eyes and I was worried about catching something on fire if I'm really honest um, it's nice to know that there is that emergency stop if you hit that button the laser will stop what it's doing and it will completely power down in an instant so you can uh, you know feel reassured that it is all inbuilt with my other laser I had to buy a honeycomb as an added extra I know sometimes when you buy packages when you first start uh, you can buy a, like a whole combined package I'm in Australia so there's less sort of packages I find available for the lasers but you do get a whole heap of these little honeycomb rails rather than the traditional honeycomb bed I was very dubious about these I'm going to say first up so you can use them the flat way and have like a very enclosed solid bed or from one side there's a sort of pointy side and then on this side it's sort of a more rounded edge as I said very dubious of these at first now I have these little slots on the left and the right hand side of the internal part of the laser these just slot in whichever way you'd like you can have them flat pointy side up or rounded side up I bunched them very closely together the other day when I was engraving velvet bags so that there was a lot of support because the velvet is sort of soft and floppy and when I was doing the acrylic cuts I'm moving them further away so that I'm not getting flashback which is when the laser hits the uh, like metal flashes back and it takes a little chunk out of your acrylic so for those really nice cuts I either lift my piece by putting it on some timber so that the acrylic is not against the honeycomb or alternatively move them further apart so that there's no support under that acrylic because it sits nice and flat anyhow so as I said dubious about these but they do actually work quite well I think you get probably around 20 of them and there's probably about 40 slots I have mine sort of separated um, I'm, you know one two skip a few and then I can bunch them up when I need to or, or pull them further away they are quite good I just clean them using spray and wipe it's worked quite well I think this one's a little bit dirty but um, they are easy to clean I tend to like to use cleaners like just pure alcohol or something that I don't have to worry about when you know the laser's hitting it so that's just me I don't know if I remembered to mention the camera so the camera sits up here in the center of the unit and looks down onto your area of workspace now you can use this in lifetime in light burn to actually position your engrave or your cut on a piece so I do find it's quite quick because you can just pull it up in a pinch and say I've got this tiny little scrap piece let me put you know a dozen earring cuts in there and you know really maximize my use of off cuts and small pieces of timber as well as really nicely align those larger pieces so I will show the camera in action I've not had a camera before uh, I haven't hooked it up on my other laser because I was a bit lazy but it is there and it's quite a good functionality 
that's probably it from the interior and the exterior of the machine now I want to get into doing some cuts so I've got some Palomia timber some natural timber rounds as well as some hardwood black acrylic even red felt so you can see the machine in action and let's see how it works so I want to get into these timber rounds so I'll pop it there on the honeycomb I've now come over to my computer in Lightburn and you can see I've put three identical hexagonal shapes on the screen so that we can cut with the 22 watt the 40 watt and the 60 watt power and see how it goes at not only cutting through but in a shape where it's changing directions as well now I have the camera function on this one so if I head up to window oh camera control is there and I say update the overlay it will show us the three hexagonal shapes actually on the piece of timber as it is in live preview so it's great because if you can go control all you can actually move those pieces around I have it set so it's all ready to go I've got the three different power presets so what I've done if you're not used to light burn is I've turned the other two outputs off so when we hit go we're going to be doing the 60 watt strength first and let's go almost forgot to show you one of the most important things which is actually putting your piece in and then using this stepped focusing piece which you get in your kit so if you are using thinner materials you're using that highest piece there for engraving and cutting timber or pieces of one to three millimeters three to six and because we are doing a thicker these pieces are about 12 millimeters we're going to be using the over six millimeter focusing piece so I'll pop that in there I'll move the laser head over and what I'm going to do is unscrew these screws on the right hand side lift the head up and pop it onto that focusing tool and then tighten up those two screws and remove that focusing piece so on the layers here we are going to be doing the 60 watt layer first there in the green and we are ready to start so here we are the job is starting you can see the level of smoke that we've got and the fan clearing that out I actually can't smell it so now I will move the laser head down to the 40 watt and we will start again Normally I leave this closed for a little while so you can see the level of smoke that is coming out of the enclosure. I usually advise to leave the fan on for a little bit longer. On this one you've actually got the fan on button so you can actually turn that on which is great if you're trying to minimize the amount of smoke in your room because it's, it's keeping that fan on for longer. So I have it now exhausted out to the window. Going to put our piece of paloma wood in and I'm just going to see how well it cuts across this is 12 and a half millimeter thick paloma wood I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name as I said before um, but let's just see how this cuts So that is our 22 watt laser cut and it has gone all the way through. Head to the 40 watt. And now moving up to the 60 watt. You can actually hear the difference between the 60 watt. It's actually like sounds far more powerful and it's cut through without absolutely any dramas at all. Now red felt might not be at the top of your list for something to engrave or cut but we're going to give it a go. But just to show you what you can do on the laser let's do some red felt. Back to the computer now and you can see that I have three best teacher ever 
engraves to be done. I'll use the 22 watt strength laser for the best teacher ever text and then I'll move to cut in the 22 watt, the 40 watt and the 60 watt strength. So I'll pop those parameters up on the screen but we're ready to go. Okay I've set the laser head to the 22 watt strength so we're ready to start our engrave. Engrave has just come to an end so I'll push through to the 22 watt cut. Wow, look at that go, it's pretty quick. The 40 watt cut. what cups beautiful perfect yep they're all coming out nicely so for this one I'm going to do three hexagonal shapes so I've moved my power down to the 22 watt strength so let's get started Number one done. I can see that's popped through quite nicely. Moving up to the 40 watt string. And now adjusting to the 60 watt level. All of my pieces are now out of the laser. So if I show you this uh, wood round, we've got the 22 watt, the 40 watt and the 60 watt power. Now, if you understand curve, you'll understand that the laser beam is larger at the 60 watt strength. So you can see that that piece is more loose than it is on the 22 watt. Each of the pieces is a nice clean cut. I must say, I can't really tell the difference between any of them in terms of cut quality. So if you're looking at more powerful laser, you're going to save yourself time if you're doing uh, a number of jobs. When I'm looking at the Paluma wood, again, each of the cuts is really lovely. I would actually have to look up which one was what wattage to tell you they all look beautifully cut. The black acrylic, I'll just put my hand behind there. You can see each of the cuts is actually really nice and smooth. So I'm very, very happy with how that came out. I thought that the 60 watt would be so powerful that it would melt it even at sort of a lower speed but it is really nice again when I put the pieces inside you can tell which one is a 60 watt piece because it is a smaller hexagonal so if you are working on pieces that join together you will need to consider kerf when you are doing that for the red felt again I did all of the engrave on the 22 watt so they will be the same you can see that the 22 watt um, laser strength cut is the closest fit the 40 watt and then the 60 watt, they've all come out really nice and clean. You barely even get like a dark edge on fabric. So it's worth noting, it's, you know, a cute little gift if you're giving um, a teacher a best teacher apple. I really like it. I'm really blown away actually at how well the cut did across all the different powers. Then at the end did a 20 millimeter piece of pine. It's got a little ridge in there cause it's um, to hold a piece of acrylic, but that came out really nicely as well. So if you are wanting to do thicker materials, you certainly can do that on the 60 watt function. Um, I obviously have been playing around with the 22 watt for some time, but I am really impressed. When you are doing a cut at 60 watts, you can hear and you can visually see that that beam is much, much stronger than what you're seeing at the 22 watt and the 40 watt power. I've really enjoyed doing these materials to see what the machine is capable. I even did a little engrave on anodized aluminium or aluminum if you're from overseas. It came up really nicely. You can tell the 22 watt is um, slightly better in terms of the engrave, but the 40 watt, I mean, I can't fault it. It's pretty good. So great machine overall. You've got the power when you need it, the 22 watt when you're doing sort of normal engraving. And then I haven't tried out the 1.6 watt intricate engraving laser head, which just pops on 
and you take the uh, the original laser head off. I haven't tried that one yet. That's for another day. But I think with this one, you've got everything that you could possibly need. Um, I, I know I'm not wanting for anything else. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are and see you next time.